test, 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 test. This is a test of the system to see if it will be reliable enough to make a simple direct upload video for one when I'm too lazy to do movies, ma movie maker and all that, but when I'm still bored enough to feel like making videos for fun. Obviously this video is not going to be interesting, but we at least still have <laughs> oh, this recorder, which looking on the screen and seeing the round shape of the reel has such a pleasing feel to it. Cardiac arrest or whatever. So, yeah. Thing is, is since we have this hooked up into the comp tar, I should be able to record my voice right through the comp tar, meaning computer, of course. So that's the goal right here, is to get sound right from through the comp tar's audio and record it. And the light is flickering to the sound, so this should be coming through. Let's see how this is. to get sound right from through the comp tars audio and record it and the light is flickering to the sound so this should be coming through let's see how this is oh came through beautifully let's put the cover on this recorder The goal right here is to get the sound right from through the comp tar's audio and record it. And the light is flickering to the sound, so this should be coming through. Let's see how this is. Either this video won't get the full length or it will take so long to prepare for preview that it's not worth anything. Also notice the 60 hertz hum present in the audio. Ah, uh, don't worry, I'm maneuvering reels over here. <sighs> the Phonotrix, one of the neat machines. These Phonotrixes are made in Germany, and this one's probably from 1959 or so. And, um,. They were made quite well with lots of metal. Now the outer case is plastic, but on the inside, the mechanical section is made with metal and doesn't even use one belt. It's all a system of idler drive. And the system is able to be surprisingly um, reliable in the way of still working after over 50 years. Although sometimes the motor servo on this one is getting a little bit weak. It could be the transistor. But amazing that it does still work off original parts. Original capacitors even. kind of transistors it uses are the following style. I have another Grundig machine which I replaced some transistors in because the originals were introducing some distortion. And they're the same kind used in the or same style at least used in the Phonotrix. And it's like this one right here. You can't see it very well unfortunately. It's old germanium in this metal can made by a company called Valvo. Not Volvo, but Valvo. V-A-L-V-O. 
and it's a spare transistor now. I have a little tray of PNP transistors. Many of them were ones from Radio Shack and stuff like that, and some other machines were taken out of tape recorders. And you can see those are all PNPs. And have NPNs as well in here. Yeah. Okay, so this video is just going to take so long to prepare for Freeview. It might have an error. It might not ever get fully uploaded, or it might only um, do up to a certain amount of time. Because here, with whatever internet connection or whatever we have going on with the internet where I am, I don't have the best of luck with um, direct uploaded videos. Now, whenever I was at my friend Chin Chan's house, his internet connection is a lot better, and with doing a direct upload with his, it prepares for preview like that. But with the computer here, it takes forever to prepare for preview, which, remember when they didn't even have that feature? But now they do, which, that, I think, is ridiculous. Oh, yes. Cannot be. Full fun time showing. Without the Steelman transit tape. Ugh, my preamp just fell down. And now, oh, God. The Steelman. The Steelman transit tape from, wow, from 1959. Still coming in? Still have a signal? Okay. Good. Okay. Now, of course, I already made a presentation video of the Steelman. But, of course, I already made a presentation video of the Hitachi TRQ330 and the Phonotrix. So, it doesn't hurt to also again show the Steelman. And. Here it is. It is a very neat tape recorder. An American made tape recorder from 1959. Believe it or not, 1959. That is remarkable. And you see the orange light glowing in the middle on the machine. That is an NE2 neon lamp. Neon glow lamp, as they're commonly called. And if you don't know, uh, neon lamps have to run on a high voltage. Usually, the minimum voltage it will take be that, that it will take to turn a neon light on is 70 volts. But even sometimes 70 volts won't turn a neon light on. You need to go just a little bit higher sometimes to uh, go to the right firing voltage, as it's called, of the neon light. But this runs on batteries, and it's not high voltage batteries. It's just uh, around nine volts or so for the amp and motor. So how is that neon light going? It's interesting, because on the original circuit design, in series with the motor is a step-up transformer. And whenever the motor is running, the governor is turning on and off. But, well, and the governor is not running in Rewinder Fast 4, but it still lights up. But the as the motor turns, the brushes, um, the electrical contact is quickly coming and going with the brushes in the motor, giving out a pulsating DC, basically, through the step-up transformer, which then steps up the voltage to a high enough voltage to light the neon light. So it's a very interesting design. And, um, this was recorded using the Phono Tricks. But now I'm making recording on the Steelman itself, just like I did on the Tachi earlier. I'll plug in from the computer, and I don't know how much you can see, move the camera down, uh, 
ain't very good, but and now the computer um, output is plugged through a attenuator jack, and then it's plugged into the recorder. And I am recording on the steel and transit tape from direct line through from the computer into the recorder from the microphone that is clipped to my shirt. I'm adjusting the level to try to get it as a good level. Remember, this is from 1959. And although there were uh, printed circuit boards around at the time this was made, I guess they weren't that widespread because interestingly enough, the circuitry inside the steel and transit tape is not done with a printed circuit board but instead is done with point-to-point -point wiring, just like on traditional vacuum tube equipment. It uses point-to-point -point wiring, and not only that, but the transistors are mounted in sockets. They, were R they are RCA uh, 2N405 transistors. It uses seven transistors, uh, it has a five transistor amplifier, and a two transistor bias oscillator. And um, Let's see how it did here. It's a really neat recorder. Remember, this is from 1959, and although there were uh, printed circuit boards around at the time this was made, I guess they weren't that widespread, because interestingly enough, the circuitry inside the steel and transit tape is not done with a printed circuit board, but instead is done with point-to-point -point wiring, just like on traditional vacuum tube equipment. It uses point-to-point -point wiring, and not only that, but the transistors are mounted in sockets. They were R they are RCA uh, 2N405 transistors. It uses seven transistors, uh, has a five transistor amplifier, and a two transistor bias oscillator. And, um, let's see. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. This was what was recorded with the phono tricks. The earlier part was recorded with this machine through a telephone pickup coil at my friend's house. Now you're hearing a recording done with the phono tricks recorder which is right here, which uses the DC bias recording system. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. Um, it's a very neat recorder. I have another machine like this that um, I don't have the um, spindles for it, and the leather case is gone, and the knobs are gone, but whenever I get the knobs, I'll get them at some point, and the real tables, I plan to build a wooden case for the other machine. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know if the whole thing will get on YouTube or if any of it will get on YouTube. But I'm hoping that this video will get on it. It's just a quick basic showing of some recorders that I have sitting over here at this work at my workbench. They're fun recorders. A lowdown on countries of origin. The Steelman is from America, United States of America. The Phonotrix is from Germany, back in the day, Western Germany. And the Hitachi Cherokee 330 is from Japan. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.